Hello and welcome to France 24's weekly music show and that was Shelter Song, the dreamy psychedelic track with which British band Temples first emerged in 2012. Now since then they have toured the world extensively and are this week releasing their third album, Hot Motion. Joining me today to talk about the new record, Temples themselves, Adams, uh, Tom, James, thank you very much for coming on the show today. Now you're in Paris for a few days this week, um, what are you up to? Uh, yeah, we're we're doing uh, uh, some TV show stuff and uh, um, a lot of uh, talking about the the new record that we're very very proud of, yeah. and some bit of mm. concerts here and there. Yeah, possibly. yeah. Next week we start playing concerts um, in the UK as well um, in some record shops. Um, you know, keep keeping the dream alive. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so your last album was super synth heavy. You did a lot of exploring with various keyboards, and uh, this one's in comparison is very stripped down. Um, uh, I read that yourself. You said that it was like you decided to put it more into the guitar. Um, was that sort of a very conscious decision, or were you a bit sick of keyboards? Mm -hmm. Last album. <laughs> it was sort of a natural progression, wasn't it? Of like just the yeah. way that the songwriting was going. It was like maybe some of the songs started um, as a, a guitar idea, so it felt weird to then adapt that in any other form, really. I think it wasn't like, oh, right, we ditched the synths. But I think there's a natural thing of having a relationship with different instruments in the studio. And I think on this record, it was very much stringed instruments um, that inspired us, I think, really. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Stripping everything back to the bare bones and making that sound as big as possible. Mm. Yeah. Okay, well how about we check out the title track from the album, this is Hot Motion. Temples there, who've got a new album out, which is still full of, um, I'd say, glam rock beats, um, some prog and some psychedelic sounds. Um, um, I want to say that just from listening to it a lot over the weekend, um, I felt there were some songs that were songs that were really um, funny and tongue and cheeky, kind of like maybe Beatles songs were. I think of the one about uh, horses, you know, the holy horses. And then there are other ones which feel like um, a rallying crowd. Cry, cry like howl with um, you know what's happening you know politically in the world people gathering for climate change and so on do you think indirectly that impacted on you maybe subconsciously mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's in there somewhere yeah sort of underlying maybe British humor which has a tendency to be on the darker side um, it's definitely in there I think um, but yeah every song kind of has its own message, I think, in, you know, whether it's reality or surrealism, you know, we sort of like to blur the lines between the two. Mm. Mm. And um, uh, you again recorded your album in Kettering, which is your hometown. You did that with the first one, you were, it was like a home recording. Um, what was different about the process of working on it this year? Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's not actually in Kettering now, but it's about 15 miles away. So okay. we've kept everything sort of within Local. Kettering. But um, yeah, this is the first time, like, um, you know, a studio was built in sort of my garden in an old in an old outbuilding. Um, so it's the first time of actually having all the gear in one room, not having to like move a sofa out the way because it was in the living room before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not having to worry about annoying parents you know because on the first record it was done you know in a tiny little bedroom at my parents house and um, so this time it was just we got to work in like a an inspiring space that has a bit of history to it it's like a 300 year old little sort of room really um, so it's quite a a very musical experience like no distractions in there like, yeah, used no. to be a dairy didn't it I think it did yeah it's been a dairy I think there's like at one point someone had it it's like a mechanics room or something you know like had a big pit that was filled in so it's a very interesting sort of room that has uh, lovely acoustic qualities which is what you want when you're mm. recording yeah and do you think um, going back to uh, the proximity with Kettering that keeps you kind of grounded you can you could probably go to anywhere in LA you could go to the south of France you know mm. but you know it's kind of going back to your roots or I think well it's just hard. I think it's a worrying thing to for us to go into a, 
a, a professional studio because you, you're so aware of having to define what you do within the hours that you're, you know, the studio is open. Um, this way, it's we really get to take our time on things that we need to take time on, and also there's no limitations of like, you know, like whether the studio is open or. It's just one of those, mm. yeah, one of those things you can just record whenever you want, which mm. is great. Mm. And you guys have been a full-time band for just over six years now, and you've toured the world. Is there any advice you'd give your younger selves now, with all the experience you've you've had? <sighs> I don't know. I don't think so. I think we. I think um, it's always a learning curve of anything that you do. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think we still live by very similar sort of ethoses as far as like we want to put music out that ultimately we like and we won't listen to necessarily what you know our record label says or management say about what tracks like they think are good or you know like we know what we think is good mm -hmm. and um, I think on this record we very much made a record that was um, songs that essentially we wanted to listen to um, and we didn't really think about anybody else listening to them. Mm. But now people will get to listen to them, and that's when it becomes very exciting. Mm. Um, it's no longer just yours. Um, mm. Another question I can't help ask is, you guys have been together since the beginning, but there's a bit of a change in the lineup that's happened. Yeah. Um, your uh, previous drum drummer, Sam, left, and now you've got a new guy. Can you inform us a bit about, uh, about how that happened? And yeah, well, who's Sam, your new guy? Sam, Sam, you know, Sam is a great friend, and. Uh, a, a, a lovely guy and we, we, we told him to leave at the end of last year so it, it was one of those decisions that had to be made. Mm. Renz is like, we've, we were known about Renz for years because um, his band Pow played with us uh, I think in yeah, somewhere in Holland quite a few years ago. Quite a few times we've mm. played a lot, yeah, alongside each other. So I think in the back of our mind we had him as our first choice and mm. thankfully he he's, he's joined and um, it's been really fun working on um, getting the new tracks ready for live with him, um, mm -hmm. yeah. And because he's the new guy, he gets to, to rest at the hotel this morning. Is that yeah, right? yes. yeah, he's, he's sitting there in a room full of champagne and, you know... Living the rock and roll yeah. lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, how about we check out some of uh, the new releases? He reportedly made $150 million this year from his music and his clothing brand, making him the world's highest paid hip-hop artist. Kanye West, who now regularly hosts a Sunday service in his quaint ranch in the US state of Wyoming, is expected to drop his new album this Friday. The ninth studio album has modestly been called Jesus is King. Recordings were conducted in Chicago, Wyoming and Uganda, amongst others. And who better to PR him than his wife, Kim Kardashian, who posted the track listing and the release date on her Instagram. Needless to say, it will be interesting to see how his reconnection with Christianity will affect his music. Canada's indie pop twins Tegan and Sarah are back this week with not only a new album but also a biography. The LGBTQ icons, who recently turned 39, were digging through tapes and videos dating back to their teenage years in the late 90s when they first started the band. The sisters took turns writing the chapters of their biography, which is called High School. It focuses on their adolescence and all the first-time experiences that went down at the time. Not necessarily a pleasant read for parents. Now, the girls also came across old demo tapes and thought that some of the music uh, was pretty decent and worthy of reworking. Here's one of the new old Tegan and Sarah tracks. Yeah, forget the sad pop. Tegan and Sarah's new album, Hey, I'm Just Like You, to me sounds very late 90s rock, but that's not a surprise. Um, would you guys ever consider like going through what you recorded when you were like 15 to 18 and re-releasing it, kind of like they did? <laughs> it's good to look back on, I think, when the time is right, uh, fondly. Um, you know, I think you appreciate things you did when you were younger more, when you know, at a certain age. And... Um, 
Yeah, but something should be left, you know. <laughs> Do you think they should have left it out? <laughs> no, no <sounds>. comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming on the show today. Uh, remember, Tempers' this fabulous album, Hot Motion, is out in all good, good record stores and online. And you'll be playing at Paris' Trabendo on the 20th of November and you're starting yes. your tour. You're doing the US for a month and then it's all back to Europe. Thank you very yeah, much yeah. for coming on the show. Um, do head to France24.com for more culture stories. The latest news is coming up in just a few minutes. But first, let's wrap up the show with Ibrahim Malouf, the French Lebanese jazz musician is releasing his 11th album, Sens, which is full of uh, brassy melodies as well as Cuban and Caribbean tints. The 38 year old will also be showcasing his new offering this week in Paris's Olympia Hall. Let's check out a teaser for the album. <laughs> 